How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today we're looking at Helldivers 2 and they released a new set of patch notes which has quite a large divided the community. Now we're going to be going through the patch notes because I think it's important but they do also have a blog update here going into detail as to why they've kind of nerfed certain weapons to kind of stop that whole mentality of if you don't have this gear you're going to get kicked like we've been seeing with Helldivers 2 over the past week. Now, this is sadly a byproduct of more difficult content and certain items are just meta and they just do better, they perform better and people expect you to have those or you simply get kicked. Now, we've seen this as a common thing during the days of Destiny 2 and other, you know, uh, live service games like The Division. If you don't have specific weapons, a specific build, specific type of loadouts, they will boot you and it's, it's, it's a shame but this here is a reaction to that and in hopes to rectify that problem by also pushing other things to the front line buffing them and making it actually uh be usable so first of all let's just go through the minor patch so if i just boost this up and i can boost up a little bit more yeah we're good with that now as you can see here i'm just going to go through the up to the stratagems part the fixes i'll leave a link in the description below and you can go through that yourself uh, major updates planetary hazard active this is the flaming tornado many planets now have additional environmental challenges that will appear at random while you are deployed from fire tornadoes to meteor storm showers and many more really cool stuff so you know the developers are really going all out with this and trying to make it as random and you know unique as possible now balancing eradicate missions eradicate missions now require more kills and enemies spawn more often the time to complete the mission was previously shorter than intended and should now usually take twice as long to complete primary secondary and support weapons breaker decreased magazine capacity from 16 to 13 increased recoil from 30 to 55 so that's a huge nerf right there a uh, railgun decreased armor penetration in safe mode decreased damage against durable enemy parts again a nerf flamethrower they've increased the damage per second by 50 percent so that's a nice buff there uh, laser cannon increased damage against durable enemy parts increased armor penetration and improved ergonomics when i used the laser cannon last it was pretty much a waste of space so hopefully this will actually make it viable now Punisher, increase the total ammo capacity from 40 to 60. I think that's good because it's a shotgun. Increase stagger force, mm, that's uh, good. Increase damage from 40 per bullet to 45 per bullet. So that's a nice buff there as well. Uh, breaker spray and prey, increased more armor penetration, increased fire rate from 300 to 330. Increased number of pellets from 12 to 16 per shot. Decreased magazine size from 32 to 26 so it's got a nice bump in damage but they decrease the number of uh the magazine size i i don't get that uh, stratagems energy shield pack backpack increased delay before recharging um clearly this was one of the meta items so they want you to not rely on this so often but if the game is really really difficult you kind of have no choice uh 380 millimeter and 120 millimeter orbital barrages increased duration of the bombardment decreased speed so again that's a kind of a buff so it's actually attacking more but it is going slower so it depending on how slow it is enemies could get out the way now we have this over here which is the actual blog post from this here which actually goes into a little more detail so i do want to go into this and read about it a little more let's see if we can just make this a little bigger i think we can go one more size okay so as we can see here balancing the five pound hell divers 2 we recently pushed a patch containing our first round of balance changes to hell divers 2 and our f head of product testing some valuable insight into our philosophical practices when it comes to the balancing hello everyone my name is patrick La so La La i was a designer of the first hell divers and i'm currently head of the product testing at arrowhead a bit of a grandiose title but what it means is this context is that i'm responsible for the arrowhead listens to feedback and balances its games i'd like to talk about the changes we made in the patch and why primary weapons so we're looking at this section here the changes to the primary weapons now first i'd like to speak to 
to the general power of the primary weapons, many have commented that they aren't powerful enough and are unable to deal with the enemies either by the amount of ammunition required or their raw DPS. This is very much intentional. You need to rely on your stratagems and the stratagems of your team to deal with the, all the enemies effectively. So essentially, your primary weapons are designed to be weak. That was their sole purpose because they want you to play this game strategically. This clearly tells you from the offset that this is not a game designed for solo play. This is not a game to designed for really matchmaking because if you're not talking or communicating or you know strategizing with your teammates, you're just not gonna have a very good time. Uh, so it's clear now from this communication where this game is intended to go and who it's aimed for. So if you're not playing with a group of three or four friends, you're just not gonna have the best of time. At least now we've got that clear. Either by Eagle Airstrikes, Orbital Support Weapons, or Turrets. Some of your loadout teams should be tailoring their loadout to killing the weaker stuff more efficiently. This means this doesn't mean your primary weapon shouldn't feel good to use, but please understand that it is a primary only in the sense that it's something you always spawn with, so it's never supposed to be that powerful. I have, since the game released seen many who say don't nerf only buff on other similar ideas however as a designer i can tell you this is not a great idea but i understand where the sentiment comes from the reason why they say this and the reason why i agree with the developer it's easier to nerf two items than buff 50 items the amount of time and resources it takes to buff 50 items also means that those enemies will also need to be changed and buffed and you know the the, the overall buffing and scaling has to be done and it's a monumentous work it's just a lot easier to nerf the two weapons that are a problem bring them down a peg and put them in line it's just that simple from a from a business point of view from a developer's point of view it just saves so much more time all too often in the games industry the core fantasy and what makes a weapon feel good and fun is ignored for the sake of balance i believe players are scared of nerfs because it will ruin the fantasy of a weapon ruin their fun it is important it is extra important to us to tread carefully so that we don't ruin fantasy and fun when we do nerfs we hope you our players will tell us when we cross that line inadvertently let's take a look let's take a closer look at the changes we have made for this balance patch sg255 breaker now let's just get a recap on this uh the capacity was reduced from 16 to 13 and the roy coil was increased from 5 to 55 breaker was quickly pinned down as the meta weapon vastly overperforming the other weapons and being the ch best choice for all helldivers at least if youtube is to be believed helldivers veterans will remember the breaker from the first game and how powerful it was something we have made an effort to mimic in this game as well when we look back at the breaker and the data we have on its usage is painted a picture of a well liked weapon that was great at killing chaff generally had a few more kills than the other weapons it was however not necessarily better at making you succeed in a mission and no real damage nerfs were warranted the calculated total damage per magazine was quite high compared to other weapons however something that couldn't be reined in while reinforced and reinforcing the intended fantasy so that's good they didn't touch the damage it's just other aspects of it that they did touch to bring it more in line the fantasy of the breaker is powerful automatic shotgun that bucks wildly as you hose down targets in front of you it should be deadly up close with high dps and its major drawback should be ammunition management and pacing your fire so you, as not to overshoot a target basically Manage your bullets, don't shoot from a mile away with a shotgun, make sure you're making every bullet count. To that end, we have lowered the amount of shells in each magazine and increased the recoil. SG-8 Punisher is another really good shotgun that I'm aware of, and this one had uh, the capacity increased from 40 to 60, so it's had a buff, it's had an increased stagger buff, increased damage from 40 to 45 penalty, so it's overall had a buff. The Punisher is a powerful pump shotgun that should hit hard, but be limited by its slow reload and fire rate, which it is. It Its rounds reload always allow you to have constantly topped up and makes the ammunition efficiency fantastic. Unfortunately, the Punisher had a bug with only half ammo being picked up each time you pick up ammunition, making its supposedly great ammunition economy quite poor instead. It also had a weak impact when firing on enemies, often requiring multiple shots, even at shorter range. I did notice this, but it still took down enemies really, really quick. To bring it more in line with the, its intended fantasy, we increased the damage per shotgun pallet, the stagger amount, and the total amount of ammunition you can carry. We hope this will make it feel more punchy, as even if you don't kill a hunter with the first shot, you'll most likely stagger it, giving you time for a follow-up, which is good. The SG-225 SP Breaker Spray and Prey. 
and that is this one down here. It's had its number of pellets increased from 12 to 16, but it's uh, magazine size reduced from 32 to 26, and its fire rate has been increased from 300 to 330. Uh, essentially, the Breaker SP was intended to be an even wilder, more point and destroy version of the regular Breaker, something where pacing yourself would be even harder. A shotgun that requires you to get closer, but in comparison, have a higher damage potential once up close. As many players commented, however, it was mostly good for tickling anything larger than a scavenger. To bring it closer to the fantasy, we increase its armor penetration, increase its fire rate from 300 to 330, and increase the shotgun pellets from 12 to 16. To compensate for this additional firepower, we reined in the magazine capacity from 32, just so it doesn't become overpowered and not meta. Now, the railgun is basically the complete meta. That's the one that's basically had it decreased armor penetration safe mode, decreased damage against durable parts. So it's, it's the one that's had the biggest nerf because it is the meta of all metas. Uh, another one of the current meta weapons enforced by its convenience and efficiency, the railgun is really intended to be a high-powered anti-tank sniper rifle, requiring both timing and with the unsafe fire mode and accuracy with where you hit the enemy. It was vastly overperforming in how safe it was to use and how convenient it was, not requiring a backpack or assistance to be effective and not requiring risk to take out even larger armored targets. To that end, we have changed it so that the safe mode is capable of penetrating medium armor, such as Ultimaton Scout Walker, but not more heavily armored enemies like Chargers and Bile Titans. For those targets, you now must run it in unsafe mode and overcharge it. In addition, we reined in the Railgun's ability to damage mostly body parts, meaning to get any real efficiency out of it, you must score hits on heads and other waypoints. Which I think is fair. If the, I mean, the weapon in its current state, everyone required you to have it because it was pretty much to press that button to win the game. And, you know... Now it's actually going to require some more strategic value, which is what this game is all about. We are aware it rose to prominence as part of the other anti-tank weapons not being as convenient or efficient in comparison. We are monitoring the situation closely. So basically, they're looking at the other weapons. Now we're coming to the flamethrower. The flamethrower is really the embodiment of stepping into a queen's lair and torching all the, her eggs, as done by a badass action heroine. It should be powerful up close, so they've increased the damage by 50%, an inconvenience to enemies that are lit on fire or want to walk through the fire and flames. As many have commented, the flamer has felt a little too anemic, not outputting damage at the rate it was warranted by a weapon with a shorter range and large volatile. So they've basically increased it, hoping that this will actually uh, make it better. Next we have the laser cannon. Our original intent was that the laser cannon has a role model of a machine gun, but with theoretically infinite ammunition. However, many players were somewhat disappointed by this role, expecting more armor penetration from the large drilling beam that it looks like, especially when looking at the orbital laser that can drill down and kill even the heaviest targets given enough time. Here, we decided to side with the community and shift the laser cannon more towards the player's expectations with their fat fantasies and as you can see here it's increased uh, damage against durable enemy parts increased armor penetration improved ergonomics uh, the laser cannon has gained additional damage versus massive body parts increased armor penetration to make it capable of dealing with medium armor and better ergonomics to make it easier to stay on target as this is quite a major change from the original intention of the weapon please be prepared that it might change again in the future so because they've pretty much drastically changed the weapon and they've understood that the weapon pretty much to design wasn't working. They they listened to the community, which I think is great, by the way. So it, it does show that, you know, it, it's a give and take uh, situation here. They have listened to the community. So I think this is okay. I mean, I've heard a lot of feedback from this where people are really, really upset with the way this whole thing has turned out. This patch it's really divided the community. But I think overall, this is actually a good patch. The shield pack is safety at the expense of the back slot. Unfortunately, the safety offered up by the shield pack was a bit too great, essentially allowing you to ignore any many mechanics that contribute to the fun of Helldivers, such as knockbacks, shockwaves, and giant explosions, obliterating your friends, you and your friends. To that end, we have increased the time the shield needs before it starts regenerating, if not broken quite significantly. Uh, this essentially means that you can't hide behind a rock for five seconds to get your shield back up to full. Instead, it will be degraded health bar until it breaks. With, when the shield breaks, it will take longer to regenerate. 
regenerated than before, but still significantly shorter than if it has not broken. To compensate for these extra times, the regen speed of the shield itself is near instant to max HP. This only this is only a partial solve in our minds for the shield pack, but it should bring it out from the must-have meta slot it has filled currently. Finally, we have the 120mm and 380mm barrages. The fantasy of these is an artillery storm denying entry to the area in which they are active and raining powerful shells on the target for a longer duration. They are primarily different from eagle stratagems in that while the eagle stratagems are fast to arrive and have pinpoint accuracy, these have a longer active time but are less accurate. They have, however, not delivered on the feel of being active much longer or saturated area denial effect. To bring them closer to the fantasy, we have decreased their scatter area and given them no extra salvo. They should still solve a problem from different problem than the Eagles, but have more value now. In closing, I hope this gives you a greater insight into how we are thinking around balancing and why make why we make the changes we have happy hell diving. And so that's pretty much the blog post that they have. So essentially what they've done here is very simple. They've taken the meta weapons, the games that are the items that are game breaking, like the shield, which had a that would basically allow you to recharge it constantly. Now it has to break, and then you have to wait for a longer duration for you to use it. It means that you can't just spam it and become invincible, which is what a lot of people have been doing. For some people, this might be a game breaker, but honestly. If you become immune to everything and every mechanic, it kind of gets boring. And sure, you have to get to that point to unlock the shield backpack, but there should be some consequences. It shouldn't be a press one button and it fixes everything. It's the same thing with like the laser cannon. They've repaired that, they've changed it based on community feedback. I'm quite happy about that. The flamethrower has increased by 50%. That is cool. The railgun was a press one button and you win. So they've actually changed that now to give it more value, to give it more strategic value, I should say. And basically not be the meta powerhouse that it was that was forced that was making people kick other players just because they didn't have the railgun uh, the sg uh, breaker spray and pray and this breaker are pretty much fan favorites from the original game they have always intended to be these really good weapons but they're quite happy with the damage output that they're doing all all in all they've made other little tweaks here and there to basically nerf the weapon down a little bit but not through the actual damage output my guess is it's still going to be a damaged nerf if they're actually reducing the capacity because now you're firing three bullets less and the recoil means that there is a chance that you could miss more shots essentially that's it you know the punisher has been buffed the flamethrower has been buffed the glazer cannon has been changed to call a buff and, you know, to a certain degree, the 120 millimeter and the 380 millimeter barrages have been buffed to kind of bring it in line with what it should be. And they are listening to feedback. And, you know, this is evident by this post over here, where they say great feedback will bring to the team. And this is over here is just talking about the Eagle rocket pods and how, you know, they believe it should work and, you know, what effect it's having on the game. So overall, I think this is actually uh, really good of the developers to be taking an active role and listening to community feedback and going by that. But if any weapon is in the game is going to get people kicked, it's going to get nerfed. So stop doing it. Even if it does mean that for that one game, your experience is going to be a little less, well, a little more difficult because person A doesn't have that weapon. It's okay. It's just one round. But kicking these people means that at the end of the day, it's going to get nerfed. So I think the reaction for this is way, way over. I think this is actually a pretty decent patch. I know it's divided the community because uh, in my next video for Helldivers, we are actually going to be covering something else where the community is actually pretty divided on this. And it's crazy how this one patch has divided a lot of the community. I just don't get it, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, that's the video. Remain legend.